Hi, I'm Evelyn Hornbeck and welcome to Assembly On Demand. This is our first webcast from the Joint Assemblies of the Anglican and Lutheran Churches in Canada. And there have never been full meetings of the two churches before, so this is a historic event. And all week we're going to be looking at what that means. But to start, let's look at the basics, the W5. The who, the what, the when, the where, the why. Well, the where is easy. We're here in beautiful Ottawa at the Ottawa Convention Centre. And for the who, well, let's go find out. So what's your name and where have you traveled from? My name is Dixie Bird. I'm from Saskatchewan, Prince Albert, the Diocese of yeah, Saskatchewan. My name is Shiva McKay and I'm from Kingfish Lake, Ontario. My name is Kyle Riggs. I've traveled from Bay de Verde, Newfoundland. I'm Alice Lees and I'm from Saskatoon. I'm Judy Bergstrom and I'm representing the Bashaw Parish, which is in central Alberta. I'm Bill Cliff from the Diocese of Huron and I've come from London, Ontario. I'm Mira, I'm from the Diocese of Athabasca. I travel from Fort McMurray. I'm from Toronto. Uh, my name is Chen Zhang and uh, I'm the pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I'm Margo Hearn, I've come from Haida Gwaii on the Queen Charlotte, the Queen Charlotte Islands on the west coast of Canada. I'm uh, Victor Leskela, I come from Sudbury. I'm Ben Bestwater, I'm from Toronto uh, and I'm a youth delegate here. I'm Duran Harris and I've come from Calgary, Alberta. To find out the why, I went straight to the top. Christ always has called us to be one church, and our being together and getting to this point of having a joint assembly is a sign to our country, to our churches, and to the church internationally that um, we're on the road towards that unity. I think that's exciting. It's historic, I think, from the point of view, too, that all the churches are watching. This is a very interesting moment. Uh, and one of the things that we have always said as Anglicans and Lutherans in this journey to full communion and living, living in full communion is that we see it as but one step, a contribution to the, the eternal prayer of our Lord that the whole church may be one. And now for the when. It's the first week in July, so some of us came early to take in Canada Day in the nation's capital. I caught up with Neil Elliott from Trail BC, who came especially for Canada Day yesterday. So Neil, what did you get up to for Canada Day? Oh, we saw some jazz, we saw the fireworks, we saw acrobatics, and we were here, down at the canal. And it was wonderful just to, to be here, having a barbecue and watching all the boats, the, the fancy ones and the canoes, just uh, going along the canal, everybody having a wonderful party together. It was a beautiful experience. So you've, come, you've had the great Canadian road trip ending here for Canada Day. Absolutely, yeah, and I feel almost fully Canadian now. I, uh, I came in for Canada Day because I thought it was going to be super exciting, which it was. I mean, to have millions of people on the hill, it's probably a million people on the hill, for, for Canada Day is crazy, and to be here in the capital. So that brings us to the what. The next few days will be filled with prayer, presentations, and of course the business of both churches. And we're going to bring you the highlights, so let's get started with day one and worship. Our hope that is that the worship brings everybody together in this new thing that they can share in this unique in this unique offering, um, and just be buoyed by the energy that we're hoping to we're hoping to build. come up with a new thing, which was sort of our mandate, to come up with a new thing that had never been done before. So the Anukshuk was an idea in terms of one of our, one of our committee members, and it, you know, part of it was this you know, Canadian icon that people would really easily identify with. It also represents, for example, the fact that all together, as the church, we're one, we're one thing. And sometimes the body breaks apart, 
but can still be in communion with one another and still represent the wider church even though we're in different spots. So as it gets broken down and broken apart, we're still all in the same room and it you know, involves different elements, so to speak. But at the end of the day, again, we're all kind of coming back together and we're all together for the love of the world. So that's sort of where it all came to be. Over and over again throughout this first day, we've heard Anglicans and Lutherans talking about their need and desire to work more closely together, both at this assembly and back at home. I caught up with PJ Hobbs, an Anglican priest, and Joel Kraus, a Lutheran pastor, about what it means to live in full communion and friendship. Why don't you two tell me about how you first started working together? We met together on a project <clears throat> for a new mission start in Ottawa and we were brought together by our bishops into a planning team that would look at the possibility and start the conversation about a mission start together. And from there began a great friendship and a number of other projects where we worked together. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot of fun, very enjoyable, and to be engaged in shared ministry um, across our traditions has been a great joy as well. There's lots of challenges that we face as a church. Um, both the Primate and the National Bishop named those, those challenges this afternoon. But if we ground it in friendship, and I think when we begin with new initiatives, and I think it's one of the things I learned out of our, our partnerships and the things that we've done together is that when we start something new, when we look to doing something as Anglicans or as Lutherans, um, we're called now to um, you know, turn to our friend beside us and say, hey, do you want to do this together? Um, nine chances out of 10, we're going to be able to do some wonderful things. There's going to be risks, there's going to be setbacks, but more often than not, there's going to be abundance and there's going to be good ministry that's done. These initiatives and the, the times like this where we come together, they're like a positive contagion. And so the, the other initiatives that happen as a result of watching, watching um, you know, Justice Camp or Clay, or you have student ministries that are working together in a very significant way. You've got confirmation ca camps that are popping up all over the place. And so the on-the-ground ministry is watching that happen within your territory and, and the territory I'm a part of is really quite exciting. So I think it begins with conversations and acknowledging the differences and working towards our similarities. One of the things I've learned is that <laughs> you, you, we have to take the risk. We have to just jump in there and try, try anything, try something. And um, to remember that this isn't about being Lutheran, this isn't about being Anglican, this isn't a territorial thing. It's about trying to build up the Church of God. And the opportunities will come. Listen to what's happening around you, and even if you have to listen to your bishops telling you where to go, go and see where it leads. You'd be very surprised the kind of uh, neat people that you'll meet and the experiences that you'll be a part of. Thanks for joining us for Assembly on Demand. We'll be here all week, meeting the delegates, covering the sessions, and keeping you in touch with what's going on. For more information or to watch live, go to jointassembly.ca.